Come back to the next episode of Targets. Stand at Hound Hall shooting, um, stand number one, uh, and this has got a rabbit target. Um, I haven't had a load of comments on rabbits, I just felt that it was something nice to sort of show and discuss. Um, a nemesis for some, a simple thing for others, um, but there's a few unique points that I thought would be worth sort of highlighting just to get you, you know, moving and off the ground as ever, which is our style of trying to get people started and understanding targets and then more importantly personalizing um, i just want to say a quick thank you again to all the support it's been amazing uh, almost overwhelming actually really cool um, and for no special reason just a shout to rob nb uh, who i think is based out in the states who's another fan of beretta like myself so nice to interact with you rob thanks for your support um, and indeed um, the silver fox he, I know who he is, he knows who I am, so uh, thank you again. But thank you to everyone, because it's uh, super cool and obviously, uh, you know, worthless without you. Um, Rabbit. Uh, years ago, I had the pleasure, actually, of working with a guy um, uh, at the West London Shooting School, um, and his name was Alan Rose. And to people of my generation and above, um, I'm sure you'll all be more than aware for, 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 the, for the younger viewers possibly not um, but he is the instructor of instructors um, he even crossed over with Percy Stanbury I think for about eight nine years um, Percy Stanbury you know one of the founders of sporting clay shooting and indeed the uh, logo for West London um, but that's enough about them we're at Hound Hall uh, anyway I remember uh, Alan saying to me um, shoot the target up the backside which I thought was quite a strange comment, but actually was referring to the speed of the muzzle. Um, and actually that idea at the time turned out to be one of great use. Let's have a look at the target in question. Now, of course, as you know, you know, rabbit is the name, uh, speed and distance and left to right, right to left, whatever. There's a, there's a, you know, a million variants. Um, but I've got a nice soft version here. It's coming left to right. Let's just take a quick look at the at the clay. So here we go. Uh, pull. See the clay coming out, rolling along the mat. A couple of little bounces and so on. I'll show you that again. Pull. Coming from the left, flying off to the right. Nice. A nice, approachable rabbit target. Okay, you, you can still catch you out, but uh, if it's a target that you're not hugely au fait with, or um, you know something that you you do tend to struggle with, um, it's a great one just to you know, to find your feet. Um, let's take a little run through on the three different approaches um, and a couple of little nuances based specifically to this target. So the interesting fact with rabbits, which is not groundbreaking, is that you can pretty much incorporate all three styles of shooting. Um, I did have a mention from someone who suggested about a maintained pull away a fourth one a sort of a uh, hybrid um, you know where one would mount in front of a target roll with it for a bit and then refine the lead and take the shot just like throw that in but let's just keep it simple we'll, we'll go with the the three as in the maintained pull away and swing through you can use them all uh, the thing about rabbits is that uh, and what will throw you or throw the style more importantly is that they do have a tendency to jump, bounce. And that is part of the fun of a rabbit target. So, you know, whether you're coming up and, you know, honed in with your particular style, be prepared for that thing to hit a small bump, a divot up in the air, and then it is pure instinct. It's a stab and a, you know, a snatch on the, on the trigger. But that's what makes the rabbit so very exciting. Um, now, obviously, it's very difficult to generalise because, as I said earlier, they all come in different speeds, distances, um, coloured clays, black clays, yada, yada, yada. But let's just take a sort of a, a gentle, general view, shall we say. Um, if we were looking at something that was quite lively, uh, and by lively I mean speed, 
I probably have a tendency to keep my hold point with the gun a bit later, keep it open, give the mind time to see the target, see the, the rabbit clay, pick it up, get a feel. Then of course from that point you've got time to you know, connect, be it behind, on or indeed in front, depending on your take. Now if you find you feel you're waiting for a second, or indeed as some have is almost pull the gun back towards the clay to then move through or beyond it, then you know it's time at that point where you would adjust your initial hold point. Like everything we've talked about throughout the series and all the different targets, for me, uh, it's not about leaving it wide open so you're waiting forever for a target, but just be kind to yourself. Make that hold point just that little bit more relaxed on any target and then work backwards because it enables you then to find the flow, the speed, and then adjust accordingly rather than something coming out, you suddenly see it, you know, and it's a, an erratic, um, you know, sort of over energetic, almost messy shot, okay? With the rabbit target, ours here, as you may have seen from the, from, from the frame earlier, is slightly elevated. Normally, one would be shooting down onto the flat or, or, or further down if the stand was, you know, slightly elevated. So uniquely to the rabbit, um, the gun, the mount, the movement, I want to keep the shoulders slightly forward. I don't know if any of you have watched the duck target where we talked about controlling the gun downwards. Um, we're not moving the gun downwards, but it's a very similar stance. So in effect, let's just say we were pre-mounted you know, on this particular rabbit. What I'd suggest you do is mount the gun up at a comfortable height and then shoulders forward and drop the muzzle down related to the target. So, in effect, mount the gun, comfy. And then what we don't want to do is bend the leg and, and slouch. We want to literally drop those shoulders forward, get that muzzle down, ready to move and take the shot, okay? Ditto for half gun down or gun down, you know. Do your little movement, whatever it is, or full gun down, and then get that nice, forward sort of position it's quite a stress point so you want to get there and then get on with it and from there you can pick your target mount move and shoot now one other unique point on the rabbit is as i see it the central line of travel now generally speaking when you pick up a flying target irrespective of approach, you usually go through the middle of it. Sometimes on the lower half, depending, we might have touched on that with loopers. But a rabbit, largely speaking, your center line is actually not through the middle of the target, it's where the target actually touches the ground. So I'm gonna get Jack just to pan onto this. You'll see here on our logo, if we imagine that's the clay, and that's sat on the ground, my hand being the ground level, our line of fire would be through the bottom of the clay. It sort of adds a bit of value if the clay jumps, but also remember that again, largely speaking, shotguns shoot a little bit higher than lower, and it's just a proven fact that if we keep that line of travel when we're shooting, we stand the best chance of connection. Most rabbit targets will run along a mat. Some are on the ground, okay? So you're just, you know, finding that, that, that bit where the clay connects to the ground. If, like us, there's a rubber mat, then you can almost use the edge of the mat as your line of sight, okay? So that's the little nuance. Very easy to shoot high, you know, going through the center of the clay. And also we've got to make sure that when we're doing this, like all targets, but more so on this one, that that mount is really tight. And by that, I mean firm and well-practiced. A slight lift of the head really will cost you this type of target. But as I said, it's practice, it's slow, it's nice and steady. Keep the whole point nice and open. And who knows what can happen? <laughs> So 
So I'm using Pullaway because it's that lovely relaxed style. You can see the muzzle out and a nice relaxed point, centre right of frame. Trap, that blue metal work sticking out of the bank on the left. And then with the release of the target, I'm touching the clay, pulling away and taking that shot. Nice and calm and relaxed. Okay, well, as ever, you've seen our obligatory shooting. And uh, as I said in the previous episode, everybody misses. But it's just nice to show, you know, a style and an approach. And it's always exciting to see a clay break. Um, I'm waffling on about rabbits. There might be someone who's new to shooting who's watching this um, who might not understand the difference between the different clays. Um, so I thought I'd just take a quick minute. Forgive me for anybody who's aware of this. Generally speaking, clays that fly through the air are sort of concave in shape. They're like bowls, upside down bowls. Again, okay? that's what, like a frisbee, and they come in three different sizes. Um, the largest one being called a standard, which is I think 102 mil, let's call it four inches diameter. The rabbit clay, same size, um, but it's flatter. If you think of a standard or flying clay being like a bowl, this is more like a plate. Um, and it's much thicker, it's much heavier, much more robust. And you'll see on the, the edge there, the profile is flat, so that that helps the thing to roll along the ground. Let's, uh, oh, let's try a live demo, really risky stuff now. Look at that, like magic. Now, the beauty of this design is that if one was to uh, uh, get a normal clay, I know you wouldn't throw it along the ground, but they're quite brittle. They, they break quite easily. Whereas this thing, when it hits a, a little divot or something in the ground, it's not gonna break. It's gonna jump and bounce, which as I said earlier, is one of the nuances and indeed one of the exciting uh, aspects of shooting the rabbit target. I talked about the three different styles. You know you've got to personalize those. I always revert back to pull away because I feel it's just a nice, steady approach and you can calm everything down. Um, you can be calm on all the styles. I just feel it's a, you know, it's a, it's, it's, it's a nice, clean example that seems to be understood by most. Um, I did mention the wonderful Mr. Alan Rose earlier, who told me about um, shooting a rabbit up the back side. Um, well, I largely always used to shoot swing through when I had a lot more energy. Um, and uh, his logic on this, when you certainly when you get a fast rabbit, um, as that thing's powering along and you're coming in behind and swinging through the bird, because everything's quite quick, bang, you pull the trigger when it looks like you're going to shoot it on the backside. But actually, because of the speed you're moving, you're actually giving lead and shooting in front. I thought it was quite funny and we put it into practice many, many years ago and it worked. It, it, it just goes back to prove that point that... Um, you know, that the, there are basics required. There is the generic stance. Let's, you know, talk about targets generally. You know, that sort of condition, that body position, weight, mount, being clear, being nice and tidy. But of course, out there, it's really about feel. Um, you know, leads, we don't measure lead. Um, all the different styles. Some people are quick, some people are slow. And that is the wonder about this game. You know, it is a feel get the basics this end, get it tight, and then just let your individual, you know, take, um, relay outwards to, to break said targets. So, um, on that front, practice slow. As I said earlier, pull away is quite a nice way, and then personalize it. Keep it nice and tight. Keep those shoulders forward, okay? Remember that, no slouching, bending the legs. Mount your gun, get that muzzle down on the line, and then keep it nice and tight and relaxed. One other quick comment. Um, someone did mention, and very rightly so, um, about guns and cartridges and chokes. Um, I probably shouldn't say this. I don't get too hung up on chokes. Um, I'm not really a technical shooter. Um, but just so you know, um, in this thing, We've got three quarter and three quarter. Um, for clay shooting, I think most would use pairs of three quarter or half. Um, could go half and a quarter. Again, find your groove, keep it open, keep it nice. 
Uh, I like old Berettas. I'm a huge fan of Beretta. Um, this is not a paid advert. I'm just a fan of Beretta. This is over 20 years old. We've got a ream of these that we use in the school in 12 and 20 gauge bore. Um, and the cartridges, so this is an interesting point. Good for practice, 21 gram loads. Now we're using hull again. Um, this is just something we stock in the school. We teach people how to shoot. We want a nice soft cartridge. Um, I bought into these, and again, this is not a paid ad, but it's just a fact. At the time, the 12 and the 20 were just really soft, really subtle. Nice for, you know, slightly thinner people with less, unlike me, with less uh, body fat um, or, or younger shots. Um, so 21 grams, really soft, really kind. Uh, and quite frankly, we'll shoot anything in this school from rabbits on the ground to, you know, 50 plus yard driven targets off the tower. Anyway, again, I hope we've added that value. Talking about rabbits, put your comments underneath as ever. And if I can, I most definitely will do my best to shed further light. But um, keep practicing, stay safe. And I look forward to seeing you again on targets. Works in right and left-handed guns.